Hello and welcome back. As you all know, Java is an object oriented programming language. So we need to understand some fundamentals of object oriented programming. When I say object oriented programming, we are discussing here what is a class, what is an object, how do we have to create an object and also about some fundamentals of methods. Fine. So of course, whenever you hear the term object oriented programming, the concepts such as encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction comes into picture. These major concepts of OOPs we will understand in Java series in depth alongside the memory map. What happens behind the scene? What exactly happens in heap area and stack area? Right now, the end goal is to learn data structures and algorithm. For that, whatever fundamentals are required, what is a class, what is an object and method, it is more than sufficient. So having said that, let's get started. Now, whenever you want to write a code in an object-oriented programming language, it could be anything, Java, C++, it is very easy to convert any real-world scenario into the code. You just have to follow two rules. First rule is to identify the objects for which you want to write the code. First of all, consider that everything you see in front of you as an object, whatever you see, it could be mic object, teacher object, student object, bus object, pen object, laptop object, building object, it could be anything, whatever you see, consider that as an object, fine. Now, maybe I want to write code about student in Java. So first I'll identify student as an object. I will route down, no, I'll write down here. I will say here student, fine. I have identified the object for which I may have to write the code. Then for this object, first tell what and all student has, then you may have to consider what all things student will do the does part of the student and the has part of the student. The has part, what all student has, maybe student has a name, student has an ID, student has an age, it could be anything, so and so forth. What all activities student does, student maybe sleeps, student eats, student study, all the activities which student does. Now, if you want to convert this, first you have identified the object, and you have also considered the has part of an object for which you may have to write the code and the does part of that object, fine. Now, for this, whatever you have considered and identified, you may have to write a blueprint. You may have to create a template, template blueprint. In technical words, we call it as class. So how do we have to write the code first? We may have to create the blueprint, which is a class. We need to start with a keyword called as class. And for whatever object we want to write the code, we have to write the name of that student. It is a convention that class name must start with the capital letter. If you write in small letter, compile time error will not be there, but it is just a convention industry standard that always class name must start from the capital letter. Fine. I may have to open the class. I may have to close the first part. I may have to write about the has part and then I may have to write about the does part. Fine. Has part is managed by the concept of variables and data types. So I may have to write the has part first. I, I have identified student has an ID, student has a name and student has an age. Whatever you have identified, you can create the variables. And Java is a strongly typed programming language. Only creating a variables will not work. We may have to write the type of the data inside this variable, which we are going to store. ID, it is a number. So I would like to go with integer. What is integer? We have already seen about it. Name, collection of characters. Char data type, we cannot use here. It is a collection of multiple characters. We may have to go with strings. About strings, moving forward, we will understand. Right now, age again, I can go with int. The has part is over. Then we may have to write the activities which student does by using the concept of methods. Method is similar to what we call functions in C programming language. Same thing we call here as methods, nothing more than that. About methods, again, detail, we will try to understand the syntax. If you are new to the world of programming, if you have zero clue about the methods, please don't worry on the syntax of methods, which I'm going to write here. Again, detail from the scratch, we'll understand what is the purpose of methods. And as a Java developer, what all the possibilities, how we can write the methods, the different syntax, we'll try to understand in depth. For now, does part we may have to write in the methods, see the conversion part. If you know the functions, well and good. If you don't know, don't worry, we will understand that in detail. Maybe student eats or maybe I'll say student study. 
that activity using the concept of methods. Whatever body you want, you can write here and no return type. So I'll go here void. Why we have to write void? Why we have to, you know, write this, open the curly brackets, close it. How we may have to write here in depth, we are going to discuss about the methods also. For now, what all activity student does? Write that using the concept of methods. The blueprint is ready. The template is ready, which we also call it as class. Having only class is not sufficient. If you want something to happen with this class, if you want this to be considered, you may have to create object of an class. For an example, if you go to any of the engineer, if you want to construct your home, you'll go to the civil engineers and you'll ask them to please give the blueprint of the home, plan of the home. If they give you the blueprint of the home, you'll have an entire picture, right? Where will be the hall? Where will be the kitchen? Where will be the bedroom? If I ask you, go and stay there. Is it possible? No, right? It's just a blueprint. It does not exist in reality. Same goes, if you just write a class, it does not exist in reality. It's just a blueprint. It's a plan. If you want something to happen with whatever code you have written inside this class, you must create object. That means if you have a blueprint of your home in front of you, looking at the blueprint, you may have to construct the home. If you construct the home, then you can get that blueprint into reality. Similarly, here also the class is ready. You may have to create the object. How we may have to create the object? You have to use one keyword in Java called as new. That means you're invoking JVM. Please do create an object of which class? please create the object of a student class. I'll say here object of student class. Fine. And for this object, object is ready right now. I'm going to give one name, whatever name you want, you can give. I'll give the name as maybe ST. Inside the ST, this object address will be stored. And what is the type of this? We may have to you know, specify ST. Is it of integer type, string type? float type, double type, no. ST is referring to student object. Hence, the type of this ST, ST is a variable name I have given. You can give any name. I'll say here, it is of a student type. It is of a student type. Fundamentally, we are understanding here, in our Java series, we will understand in depth what happens in the heap area about the constructors and the other important oops concept. Right now, what is in class and how do we have to create an object of a class? That fundamentally fine. So now the object is ready. Maybe I want my student to study. So whatever code I have written inside this uh, study method, I want that to be executed. For which you just have to say, ST is a reference variable. I'll say, please go inside that object. There is a method called as study. Please invoke that method. If you invoke whatever is there inside this, that will be executed. Fine. This is a class and this is an object. Now let's go in the IDE and try to write the code so that we can understand fundamentally about the class and object before we move ahead here. Fine. So I have identified student as an object for which I may have to first create the blueprint, which is a class. I will say here class student. Great. First, I may have to write the has part. So I will say here integer type of ID. And again, I will say string type of maybe I'll say here name and again, integer type of age. Great. Then what all activity student does? Maybe I'll say here student study. I will say here system dot out dot print ln. I will say here student students are studying or maybe I'll say here student need to study whatever message you want, that should not be a matter of concern. And since there is no return statement here, I would like to go with void. The syntax of method, if you are new to the world of programming, you need not to worry. I'm going to be separately in the concept of methods. Right now, just see the conversion of a real into the code and how we may have to create in class an ob object, fine. Now, maybe I'll write one more activity which the student does. I will say a student maybe sleeps. And whatever message you want, whatever body, it could be one line, 10 lines, 100 lines, or whatever activity you want, you can write, which we will understand moving forward. I will see here maybe student is sleeping in the class. Fine. Now has part is over, does part is over. It is just in blueprint. If you want to give a life to this class, then you may have to create an object. How do we have to create an object? I'll go to my starting point of my program, which is a main method. And I'm going to give here, say, please JVM, create an instance. Object is also called as instance. Object creation is also called as instantiation. Instantiation means object creation. Object means instance. Both of them are same. Different way, different people call it. Fine. 
So I'll say here, please create the instance or object of this student. Object of this student, create. And to this object, I'll give the name. Maybe the name I'll give it as ST. You can give any name, you can give student name, doesn't matter. Whatever name you want, you can give. It is of type student. Object is ready now. This is an object. This is a name to an object, which is of what type? Student type. Now I'll say ST dot, please go inside this. Call this activity. From here, control would go to this student, I mean, to this study, and whatever code you have written here, that will be executed. Maybe I want to execute the code, whatever code I have written inside this sleep activity, inside this sleep method, for which I'll say here, st dot, please invoke this method, please call this. That means please execute the code, whatever is written inside this method. Now, if I just have to run this, we can see we are getting the desired result. So of course we may have uh, some already, you know, class with the name student. I'll go with the name as student one. Okay. I'll say student one and student one. Maybe student one is also there. A uh, student is already there. Okay. Maybe I have written some other code. Student one is not there. If I just have to run this, you can notice we are getting this. Whatever code we had written inside this methods that is getting executed. Right now, we have not assigned any data here. If you want, you can assign also. That should not be a matter of concern. Maybe you can write one more method which will assign the data into these variables. We will understand more of this in the concept of methods. What is the syntax of these methods? How we may have to know, write this? More on the classes and objects by default will get you know clarified in that concept. For now, I hope you have understood fundamentally. If you want to write a code as an object oriented programming developer, how we can consider an object and convert that into the code. First, we may have to write the class, which is a blueprint. And then we may have to construct an object. We may have to create an instance of the class and using the reference, whatever name we have given, whatever activities you have written inside this, we may have to execute. Now, what is this void? Why we may have to write this? All these things we will try to understand. In my Java playlist, which is going to come very soon, I'm going to discuss the concept of oops in the with respect to heap area, stack area, what happens behind the scene, and all the major concept of object-oriented programming, such as constructor, encapsulation, now then inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, interfaces, we will understand in depth. Right now, the end goal is to understand data structures and algorithms. For that, some basics of Java we may have to understand. So we are discussing what is a class, what we have to do with respect to object. More on this, we'll understand the concept of methods. While understanding the concept of methods, we'll understand by default more on the class and object. Thank you so much for being with me in this video. Make sure to like the video, subscribe the channel and share with your friends and peers.